Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we have a, another new product from Intel. This is actually an update to the Nook, the next unit of computing that we actually looked at towards the end of last year. Uh, this time it's getting a Haswell refresh. Uh, this was part of the package they sent to us. Obviously this is not the unit itself, but is instead a cleverly designed marketing tool uh, with uh, the Intel Chime. I believe the retail ones actually had the, the Chime in it before. A gimmick, but a neat gimmick nonetheless. So here it is. This is the new Haswell-based Nook. It should look very, very similar to the previous generation, which I happen to have uh, one of them sitting here as well. Now, uh, we'll, we'll show you some of these differences between the two. Obviously, this one is based on Ivy Bridge. This one is based on the new uh, fourth generation core processor has well. Now if we uh, if we kind of do a little close up here of uh, of these two and let's see if we can flip this up you can see that there is a Z height difference between the two models um, whereas the Ivy Bridge is a little bit taller the new Haswell one is a little bit shorter which is nice considering you're getting uh, a little bit more horsepower uh, and capability out of them otherwise they are the same four inch by four inch computing unit. Obviously that's where they get the name from. Um, this, the Haswell unit is the D54250WYK, which is a big stream of numbers. This, for those of you that want to be more visual, uh, that basically tells you what processor is in there and uh, what kind of components and accessories it'll, it, it actually has with it. On the front, we see two USB 3.0 ports, we have a combination audio headphone jack, and then you have an IR receiver built in as well. You've got your Kensington compatible lock. On the back, you have your power display port, mini HDMI. You have a gigabit Ethernet port, two more USB 3.0 ports, and then this is the exhaust uh, for the fan that is inside here that helps cool the processor. Now, I want to point this out. This is mini display port, not Thunderbolt. And the reason I point that out is because the previous model we had actually had Thunderbolt. It's also made a display port, but it's actually Thunderbolt as well. Um, so that connectivity option is gone from the Haswell version, which is a little bit disappointing, uh, but probably not a, a deal breaker for most people. This one had HDMI and standard USB. So I think overall, in terms of connectivity, for the majority of users, this is going to be the upgrade that people want. You got four USB 3.0 ports, built-in Ethernet, you still have HDMI, and then you have DisplayPort as well. Now this is mini HDMI, so you are going to need a little adapter. Now, in the box with the Nooks, you get the unit itself, bare bones, we'll talk about that in a second, and then you get a power adapter, and you get a plate to mount this to a Visa-compatible uh, display, TV, or monitor, whatever it is, and you get a quick guide, quick uh, setup guide. What you do not get is the power cable, which is a little bit annoying, the actual cable that plugs into the back of the adapter and then into the wall, and that's because they say they're trying to cut down on costs, so they wanted to, you know, not have to include so many different cables and adapters with it. It's a little bit of a cop-out, but uh, you'll have to get one of these uh, particular three-pronged cables to actually boot it up. Now, Intel sells these as bare-bone units, which means you have to actually buy some other components to get it working. We're going to go ahead and open ours up and show you what Intel provided to us for testing, and then we'll talk about what... It's, it's not a very complicated process, but to do installation. So to get inside, uh, there's simply four screws that you have to uh, get at uh, underneath the feet pads here, and then it's just kind of digging in and pulling off this uh, bottom panel. Uh, you can see here that there's a rather thick thermal pad to conduct some of the heat away from the SSD uh, to the rest of the chassis as a cooler, which is nice. So here you go. We're inside the 4x4 unit. Things look very similar to the previous Nook, but a little bit different as well. Uh, first thing to note is we have 8 gigs of memory in here. This is DDR3L, so this is the low power memory, and it's actually two 4 gigabyte modules in here. These are from Crucial Micron. Uh, you can pick that up for about $65 for 8 gigs of memory, which is still impressive. The SSD here is actually one of the new Intel uh, 530 series SSDs. This is a 180 gig model. That MSRP is for $200 currently, and it actually just came out last month. Um, so 
performance-wise, we actually showed more than 500 gigs of read and write capability on that unit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove the SSD, which was just as simple as taking out the one screw and uh, taking out that little tiny module there, because underneath there is the wireless adapter. Even though it has gigabit ethernet built in, you know, it has the capability to install a wireless PCI Express adapter. And this is actually the Intel 7260 dual band wireless AC. So this is actually 802.11 AC, uh, very high performance. And uh, this adapter is actually relatively cheap. You can pick that up for $35 or so on Newegg and other outlets. Um, now, because it is a bare bones unit, you could choose to, if you say, well, I'm never going to hook this up to wireless, you don't need to install any of that there, but you do need to install something, obviously, for storage to install an operating system on. What's also interesting that might be new, or is new, that you might have noticed is this SATA port and this SATA power connector. And that's kind of an interesting design choice here on this board. The previous unit did not have anything like that. You can actually connect a SATA hard drive or an optical drive or whatever it is, and then to power it, you need a female-to-female -female power connector, which is a little bit hard to find, but they're out there. Um, in this chassis, that obviously doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but there are other companies that make other cases um, passive and active for the Intel next unit of computing-based boards. And the idea there is, well, now you can hook up a two and a half inch, you know, large form, you know, large capacity hard drive, standard spindle-based hard drive, or you can connect any two and a half inch SSD if you want. You can get into optical if you need to, but I think that probably defeats the purpose really of uh, of buying a product like this. Um, so inside, it very much looks like the last generation of product. It's cool to see this much compute power in a four by four square. The processor itself is actually on the other side of the unit and there is a heatsink on it. There is an active cooler. There's a fan on there, which obviously explains why you have these vents on the top of, uh, on, on top of the NUC. And it, it's, it's not silent. You can definitely hear the fan when things get going. Uh, when, you're, when you're running CPU heavy tasks or GPU heavy tasks, it's going to make a little bit of noise, but it's really not that much. It's, it's less than you would get out of any kind of typical systems. Now, in terms of performance, which is interesting to mention is that this is essentially the exact same processor that exists in many Ultrabooks, including the new MacBook Air. It's the Core i5 4250U, and it actually includes the Intel HD Graphics 5000. So it's not an iris-based system, so the, the GPU performance is going to be a little bit minimized because of that. Uh, our testing showed that it was performance, both CPU and GPU-wise, basically identical to the MacBook uh, Air, and it looked exactly as you would expect for an Ultrabook. You were essentially getting an Ultrabook platform in a small form factor device that you can hook up to your TV, mount to the back of your monitor, uh, and with the performance levels you get, it's, you're pretty much getting the power of a full computer that you can mount in any location. So uh, if you go to PCPro.com, you check out the full article that we posted about the new Haswell Nook, you'll see the benchmarks, you'll see the power consumption. Power consumption at idle is like eight watts under a max. The highest we were able to get it was somewhere around 28 watts, I think, doing CPU and GPU at the same time. Uh, it, it's a really impressive little device. Pricing wise, this is gonna cost you $360 for the bare bones unit. As configured that we, as we had it configured here in our testing, you're talking $200 for the SSD, $35 for the wireless card, $65 for the memory, another $300. Bucks. You're talking $660 for the entire package here. That's not really cheap when you start getting into small form factor computers, but considering the amount of performance you get here, it's definitely worth considering. So check out the full article at PCPar.com. Thanks, guys, for checking out our video.